Okay, and welcome guys to another Draymond's Guide to the Dungeon tutorial. So, today, or in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the throne room. Now, why are we looking at the throne room? The throne room is a place where a lot of people uh, use survival to gear up. So, once you've kind of done your either Magus Quarters or Alchemy Laboratory survival, a lot of times people will move on to the throne room next. And Throne Room obviously is going to offer you better gear than those because it's a harder map and it's higher up on the list. The other thing we're going to be looking at, of course, is the boss fight on the campaign. So, I just got another chat to read, sorry guys. But anyways, we're going to start off with the campaign on Throne Room. And of course, you can apply a lot of these principles to... Uh, you can apply a lot of these principles to survival as well. So, the nice thing about this map is only two crystals, there's only a few chokes, you know. It's kind of one of those things. So, it's pretty easy for a lot of players just because, you know, you can get a lot of your, you can get your towers to cover a lot of areas at the same time. So, of course, starting off with, um, on campaign, you almost always want to start off with your traps because you're going to find it very, very hard to start off with, you know, kind of anything else because you'll find that enemies just kind of get through a little too easily. So, of course, first thing, as usual, is gas trap. Gas, 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 and gas. Gas is amazingly useful when you do not have ridiculously high stats. Now notice here, I can actually place this gas trap so that it gets everything on the top lanes as well. As I was saying, this map is very small, condensed. You can use your traps extremely efficiently to um, defend a large amount of areas at the same time. Okay, so there we go. We've got our gas traps. As I said, there's not a lot of other traps that are really going to be that useful. Oh man, didn't do that one well. And now, oops, I don't want the auras next. Now usually, the reason why I usually like, why I quite often skip auras, there we go. The reason why I like to skip auras early is I just find that early on, you know, if you, you'd you have to kill the ogres manually, it's the big problem. That's the real big problem. Uh, I don't remember, you know, especially, you know, not every map has ogres early on, but some definitely do. You gotta watch out for that. So anyways, first things first, let's get ourselves a couple of harpoons down. Of course, try and get those angles as efficient as possible, because sometimes that can make a huge difference as to how well you do on the map, uh, the angle of your harpoon. So I can shoot everything that comes here. I can just kind of probably hit the stuff that's gonna be stuck up here on the gas traps. That's kind of the idea. And then of course, I also wanna think about how is this going to work with my buff beam? So I want to build them in such a way that they're going to be easy to buff. Ah! Okay. And of course, I so now I'm going to crossfire in the back here. So now they're kind of guarding each other against spiders and stuff, as well as being able to shoot enemies in the back. And I'm also getting something that's still really, really easy to not use an excessive amount of buff beams with. Okay, so once again, probably not going to be going too heavy on the harpoons, just because, you know, a lot of times your DU, you got so many weird things that you want to spend DU on. So, um, as you can see, everything nicely gassed. That's awesome for us. You know, the guys should be upgrading right now. I'm not upgrading because I'm the builder and I want to save my mana for building. But they should have been doing some upgrading. So now we can get into our... You know, auras, we want to get down as fast as possible, and then right after auras, we can jump into the, uh, we can jump into our buffs. So anyways, we're going to be doing this as if, you know, for survival build as well. So we're definitely going to want to be using um, all of the auras this time, all three. We're not going to want to skip that ensnare aura, because this is kind of a build that could be useful for survival as well. And once we have everything buffed, that will increase the range, and then you'll find that those auras can definitely cover all of your areas that you need to cover. So that's... <coughs> yes, I know you have builds. And I have builds too. And we're not focused on the best build right now. Because if you guys are looking for, you know, the absolute best build, the best thing to do is just go on the forums. So once again, make that 5 DU. Make sure that both of my harpoons are buffed here. Um, actually, they're not both buffed, so we'll just rebuild that just a tiny bit over to the side. So I find that it's usually easier to have a buff. If you're doing survival building, it's easier. Oh man, we'll just jester move tower that later. Um, 
So it's easier to place your buff beam first and then build, you know, your towers on it if you're doing survival. Okay, so see that one I managed to get both buffed together. That's what I want to see. Um, now here, we got some interesting things that we kind of got to do. Um, so we want to put a wall here, obviously. So if the ogre is one, you know, we don't want the ogres getting down. I don't even know if, you know, if they try and walk down there. And of course, we want to make sure that the shark can aren't charging that wall. So we'll have to keep an eye on where that wall placement is. Uh, might not be the best. And as I said before, we want to get buff, buff, buff. So what I'm going to do is, hmm. Hard part here is, the really hard part here is making sure that it's not something that the sharks are going to charge. And it's also trying to get um, your wall in such a way that you don't have to worry about ogres attacking whatever towers you've got kind of defending the back here. Okay, so now we're going to want to go with our reflect beams. As I said, oh no, I missed some walls. <laughs> okay. So I might need to change that part up there. Because now I forgot I need walls and they cost more DU. And I still want reflect beams. So main thing is, you know, I definitely want reflect beams protecting... Um, these from the ogres, from the choppers. We're gonna do a reflect there. We're gonna do a reflect over here. Okay. And I'm not worried too much about the spiders, although they can, they can definitely be a threat. You know, so without the extra reflect beams, I, I might run into problems. I don't know yet. We'll find out. So also, I'm gonna be putting some minions on here. So the big thing is, you know, another reflect beam. Hopefully, you know, I'm leaving some gaps, sadly, for the choppers to kind of shoot through. It's kind of unavoidable with just the way that I... Right now, it's kind of just unavoidable with the amount of DU in this build. As I said, you know, you can go on the forums and you can find refined builds when you get to that point in the game where, you know, you really want to have the best. Okay, so now, whoa, let's swap to my summoner and we can finish the building with the minions. So that is obviously the last thing. We've got all of our DU used up. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is place your spider, and the nice thing about spiders, you can build another unit right on top of the spider. So, that's going to be super useful, um, you know, just let us place a little bit better. Okay, once again, in combat phase, really I should be summoning, you know, as many types of, of minions as I can at once, because they summon really, really, really slow. Really freaking slow. <laughs> So once that archer is done, I can start another one. Spider's probably going to finish before the mage minion. Yep, so I can start that. And my mage just finished up there, so now I can start a mage as well here. And we're just going to walk them on to the buff beam now. And remember, as I said, they can walk right through towers. They're not going to complain about, oh no, I can't do that one yet, because i got to move that hard moon. Okay. Another little thing, as I told, as I was, as you, as I was saying, you know, I was saying that, oh, I'm going to use Jester Move Tower. Well, the thing with harpoons is you can place them a lot closer together with Jester Move Tower than you can place them by building them. So that's kind of why I went. Uh, I don't know if that guy's protected by the reflect, and he's probably in range of the ogre club. But you know what? You can't you can't win them all. You can't win them all. Can't win them all. Okay, I need some mana, but he just took the mana out of that chest. Okay, that should be enough for a move tower. No, it's not. Now I have enough. Okay, so we activate our move tower, and we're going to just reposition it a little bit, make sure we still have that nice rotation angle we want, and there we go. Now they're both buffed easily. Swap hero. We can finish our summons. And, you know... Especially on, um, nice, I can't even think what I'm trying to talk about. Especially on campaign, it's not as important always to finish everything. Um, just because the way that campaign works, it's much easier than survival. Yeah, so, oh no, I just cancelled my uh, archer by trying to summon two at once, that's annoying. See if I can move this guy back just a touch. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. He's no longer buffed. Oh, no, no, no. That's not right. Uh, okay. Okay, anyways. 
we'll stop sticking around with that and we'll try and just finish our building now. Or as much as I can for the so that I'm ready to go on the boss fight. Ready and raring. Okay, we'll move you over just a tiny bit so I can put that archer right there. I'm going to put an archer there. As you can see, I've got lots and lots of MU left, so I'm not going to finish building it, though, just because of, you know, this being campaign, not survival. But, you know, on survival, you'd basically just finish by, you know, you just build a little bit more here, build a little bit more here. Uh, of course, you know, I have left this open right here for ogres to walk through. You could definitely consider freeing up some DU by selling you know, only having the two harpoons and putting walls here, or of course if you're using minions as your walls, that's, you know, a great thing. So, um, but, oh man, no, 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 don't fall off the edge, that's the main thing I want, is that he doesn't fall off the edge. Okay, let's hope he doesn't walk off the edge. I don't know if he will, without me watching him. And... Okay, so let's get a DPS for the boss, and, you know, if you're doing survival, you're definitely going to need extra walls. You're definitely going to need some walls here to prevent the ogres from coming and hitting your towers. The campaign, not the end of the world. Uh, basically, really the only way, you know, there's a couple things you could do is... I, yeah, look for more efficient builds on the, on the forums. That's, that's, that's just the way to go. The way to go. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried. Anyways. Okay, so the boss on this map, we're going to be giving you guys a rundown of that once we're done. Now, the only thing is, I I just don't know, like, I'm pretty sure here that you don't have ogres walking this way. So you might actually be able to, might actually be able to not have anything defending against ogres from here. That's very possible, because when I was watching last round, it looks like the ogres don't really like to walk down these stairs, so... That's something you can actually do, is you can free up the DU, you can take out, you know, you can have that buff beam trick I was showing you. You get your auras onto, you know, overlapping the buff beam, so that way you don't need a buff for here. Oh, that made it fall. And you can take out your wall, potentially. So, that's kind of what I would suggest, you know, if you need to get those walls up in the other area. You know, you can take out this wall, you can take out this reflect beam, not have minions here, uh, potentially. And then you can, uh, yeah. And you can try and buff your buff, buff these ores on these buff beams. Of course, you can move these harpoons and put them over here a little bit more to make the buff beam a little bit closer to the score stack. Yeah, because there's definitely no ogres coming that can damage a crystal. There's no ogres that walk down this path. So you don't, actually don't need to put any walls there against the ogres. And, you know, I would still have a reflect beam, though, right, right down here. Make sure that archers don't somehow start shooting your crystal from up there. Otherwise, it should be pretty good. So there we go. Um, yeah, that's 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 my suggestions on how to make this a bit better for survival. Because you definitely do want to have those walls. Yeah, that's fine. I think he's fine. Meh. A little. Okay, so anyways, our goblin mech boss spawns over here. Um, I don't have enough block to use the block thing, but, uh, you know, sometimes what players will do, if, you know, you're having a lot of trouble with bosses, you can set up a strength train aura, or a healing aura, or both, in the boss area, to really help you with the boss fight. So, you know, like, we didn't really need all four of those harpoons, we could have just used two harpoons, and then had DU left build some auras here. Pretty cool. So now, boss cutscene, Goblin Mech walks in. Pretty intimidating, awesome looking. Also really hilarious. <laughs> it's not working, and then boom! And oh, they zoom in on this open forge thing in the back. Hmm, I wonder if that's his weakness. So there we, once again, as I said, a lot of the bosses, if they have a weakness, they will show you during the cutscene. Uh, it's not always super obvious, but, so now he's gonna be shooting some rockets. Of course, if you're fast enough, you can move around and dodge them. He also attacks with swords, you know, if you're in close range, ooh, I got webbed. I want to get out of there. No, I died. So, his vent opens up in the back at some point. So he keeps shooting rockets. He's kind of walking towards the fences. Now he's in those auras. So now he's going to do a bit less damage. It's going to be a bit easier on you. So, 
There you see his vent opens in the back. If you can now, you want to shoot that back vent. You actually have to attack the vent itself, or at least from behind the melee character. And it does a lot of additional damage to the goblin neck. So, you know, that's definitely something to think about. That vent's open, as you can see, the mage is shooting from behind. It takes a lot of damage, and that's how you kill him easily. So now we've killed the boss. Hooray! And now you're ready to do this map on survival and farm some gear, so congratulations. Um, yeah, that is... That is Throne Room. And so yeah, Throne Room is useful when you're kind of under... When you can't yet do Misty Mire. You know, if you can't yet do Misty Mire survival, you know, and you still need a place to farm, Throne Room's good. Of course, you know, if you're even finding some of the other maps that I'm going to show you difficult, Throne Room's still good. Throne Room's just, you know, it's a nice segue point for people, you know, usually around 1,000 stats. You know, it's kind of the point where Throne Room starts becoming worth farming, a little bit of survival, sometimes a little bit higher than 1,000 stats, you know, but uh, somewhere around there. It depends on, you know, what builders you have access to and how strong your builds are. Okay, well, let's go back, and we're going to do one more tutorial, and that'll be it for tutorials for today. Okay, so now Ramparts, this is a map that I loved farming. Uh, it's a pretty decent, it's better than, it's definitely going to give you some decent uh, gear. You know, Ramparts, you can get some decent gear off survival. I really like this map. It was a lot of fun. I'm not going to be showing it to you guys today. But what I want to show you is Endless Spires.